Chair, and thank you, Mr. Atia, for being with us today. You clearly listened in to the last panel and listened in very closely. Uh, I want to first start by asking you a question about the CRA and in particular about the much anticipated report of the past ombudsman, which we now know will will cannot be as comprehensive as it should be because of his lack of access to information. So my question is, what use will this report be if it is incomplete in its information? And what is the community expecting then from the report uh, which came out of the Islamophobia Summit with high hopes, I would say, and now here we are dealing with a situation that is uh, lukewarm at best. What are your comments on the sorry state of affairs we find ourselves in? Do you believe the minister knew about the limitation on the ombudsman? Thank you, Senator. Let me begin by saying that prior to the National Summit on Islamophobia, the Muslim community did not call for a review by the ombudsperson specifically called for a moratorium on RAD audits of Muslim-led charities and a review by NSIRA, because community leaders and those who wrote the reports understood what was required because this issue is not limited to the Ministry of National Revenue or the CRA. As mentioned in testimonies, it is an all of government uh, uh, problem and has a source, uh, had the source of the problem also uh, is, is in the NRA, which is uh, owned and published by the Ministry of Finance. And so instead of taking the recommendations that was put forward, the government chose to use the ombudsperson. I can tell you, Senator, that the Muslim community informed the PMO and the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of National Revenue of these limitations of the ombudsperson before the review began. It was very clear that his power was non-binding, that this issue had national security uh, aspects that he did not have authority for. So it was very clear to everyone that the government continued to take this approach. The moratorium on audits, Senator, is a very important part of this as well, because it is important that while an investigation takes place, charities who were already under audit did not continue to be subjected to prejudice. Human Concern International was suspended by RAD in, uh, while all of this was happening. Uh, MAC, the largest Muslim charity, has had to go to a, the Ontario Superior Court for a charter challenge and other charities are under audit uh, by RAD while all of this is happening. And so overall, the process and approach the government has taken has not instilled trust within the Muslim community that the outcome will be one that drives reform. Instead, this, this review began in February it's due in March of next year, and now we are in November and hearing that the ombudsperson has one arm tied behind his back, and our expectations should not be very high of this report. With that, I want to switch to the CBSA. Um, <coughs> the government is tabling Bill C-20, which for the first time will create an independent oversight committee, oversight over, the, over both the RCMP and the CBSA. CBSA is new, the RCMP already exists, but they will be merged. Do you believe that this independent oversight mechanism will, will uh, stem the obvious cases complaint driven on a complaint driven basis by Muslims on unfair treatment that they receive at the hands of the, of the CBSA? Today, the CBSA, uh, Senator, is the largest law enforcement agency in this country, and it has absolutely zero oversight. The legislation gives unfettered authority to an individual CBSA officer to do what he or she chooses without any ability for anyone to intervene except for the minister himself. The system is flawed, and it impacts people's lives refugees who are coming to our country, as the example I've provided. And so considering where we are today, the direction to provide oversight over the CBSA is very important and very critical, and one that this government has been struggling to pass for several years now. And so I understand, and I'm not an expert at the bill, I've reviewed it and read it, there are issues with the bill 
that NGOs and organizations have brought forward to the minister's office. Uh, one example is that while there is an oversight body who can look into complaints, the oversight body cannot, in fact, reverse the implications of something that is wrong, done wrong to an individual um, impacted by the CBSA. And there are many other examples uh, uh, that are of concern to the community. But it is important direction that we're taking. Oversight is necessary uh, because it's been missing for far too long.